Hello again traders, this is Corey Rosenblum. Take a moment to continue our thought on the retracement versus reversal debate in the market. We saw the Dow Jones in the last video. This time we'll take a look at the S&P with the RSI, which is the Relative Strength Index indicator. And we'll just see what the odds are, what the historical charts have been, and most importantly, what's happening now, what should we be looking at, as we go forth and trade and invest in this potentially topping stock market right now in 2015. Looking at the prior charts, this is the S&P 500. It's a weekly chart, and it's where we are. This is going into September 2015. The chart starts about 2010 and runs through this bull market. Remember, the bull market started in 2009 in March and has gone all the way up, higher highs, higher lows, bullish money flow, positive strength, all the way into the 2100 level, where we are now in September. But the market, as we saw in the prior video, pulled back about 200 points in the S&P 500. Also, we looked at the Dow Jones, but it pulled back as well in 2011 and 2010. So we made a comparison with respect to, is this a just another the third retracement, or is this the big one? Is this a market reversal? And last week we argued for the retracement status. Let's see the, what the charts say about potentially a reversal right now. So that's where we are, pulling back. Not that much different at this point from 2010 and 11, or is it different? So the lengthy RSI divergences, it's a principle that we use as a chartist in the technical world. Lengthy RSI, a relative strength index, just a key indicator that tra traders use, will typically precede major market reversals, not just a single divergence. And we'll talk about what exactly a divergence is, how you can spot it, and how you can track it throughout the coming weeks. Going back in time to 2000, and when the market had this tech bubble, the bear market began in 2000 and traded down to about 2003. But what factors, just using the RSI, not to mention anything else we use as traders, but what did the RSI say about the market peak? As we see, the RSI started making lower highs. And a divergence is by definition, on the chart, when price makes higher highs all the way up, higher highs and higher lows, mainly concerned with higher highs, but the index, the indicator, makes lower highs. You want to compare the price highs with indicator highs. This is the final peak, the last gasp of breath, the last top of the market here above 1500 in 2000. And see the RSI had been making a long string of lower highs as price made higher highs. That is a divergence. And lengthy, long, many, multiple divergences will typically precede a market top. That's what happened in 2000. The opposite situation, we call this a positive divergence. That's where the RSI trades higher. It actually makes higher lows as the market makes lower lows and forms a bottom or a reversal spot. And we can compare the same things. So the final, not exactly the final low, but as the market did this one, two, three, the RSI actually made one, two, three higher lows. And that was the bottom of the 2000 to 2003 bear market. And that started the 2003 to 07 bull market. And the same happened in 2007. The higher high, lower high, lower high on the actual peak. We can clarify that with this red arrow. Lower high, lower high, lower high as the market made higher high. The final high happened to be about 1500, which is about the same place that it was in 2000. And the market went into this financial crisis, housing, financial, bank stocks, that sent the market much lower into a very steep bear market, and that ended in 2009. The same thing happened with RSI. In 2008, price made a 1, 2, 3, just like 2003, three lower lows, and the RSI itself made three higher lows. You can see those two, green arrow, and comparing the final price low. This is what began the bull market of 2009, what this RSI was at the time, 2007, eight into the peak. So this is the most important. Okay, we get the history. That's great. As chartists, that's important to us. It's comparing what's happened before, and we 
plot a pathway for price. What happened then could be happening again, and indicators help us with that to make trading decisions. And also, in this case, investing decisions. Big picture concepts are made on the higher time frames. So what's happening now? It's really the same thing. The RSI, this bull market, has gone on from 2009 to 2015. That's wonderful. That's been great for our portfolios. We know that bull markets can't last forever. This still could go higher, as we saw last video. We just want to know, is this the peak? What should we be doing? What is RSI saying? Throughout 2013 and 14, we saw these divergences, but not much. That wasn't really a big diversion, so that was good with price. However, in 2015, that's when the market started to form these higher highs on lengthy negative RSI indicator divergences. As you see, the market fell sharply from 2100 down under 1900. So hopefully, this is just another retracement in the bull market trend, and we'll trade back up to these highs. It may take a little while to get there. Be sure to reference the prior video that we looked at, because the market had the three phase if the bull market continues. Phase one is going to be the steep pullback. We already have that. Phase two is a consolidation. We may be in that right now. And if the market repeats with the retracement, we will have a strong up move that would take us up to new highs. That's the retracement bull market continuing thesis. If, in this case, the RSI and other indicators we'll see in the next series of videos, if that is signifying a market peak, we'll watch this. If the market goes under 1900 and stays under this level, that would argue for a possible larger reversal. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But if it does, and let's see the level there, there's your RSI divergence. Don't panic, be cautious. Have a plan. We'll work you through the strategies of what we do with market peaks, how to position portfolios, how to change really a market bias. If you're bullish, if you're invested, and the market starts to show signs of peaking and topping, what do you do? How do you protect yourself? We'll take a look at other indicators other methods, other strategies to get a little bit more perspective and depth to see what they're saying about the current market. Is the market simply retracing, consolidating, and going up to new highs, or is this it? This is the peak, and down we go. Stay tuned. We'll take a look at that next video.